Hey, welcome to Stairwell Training. I have gotten into the Halloween spirit, if you will, and um, so even though I know we have another Stairwell Training before Halloween, I could not stop myself. We are doing a Halloween-themed workout, so get ready because it's going to get really spooky. <sighs> okay, I'm lighting some candles. I'm lighting my black candle. I had way too much fun coming up with all of these workouts. You ready for this? We've got, actually I'm not gonna tell you what the movements are. We're gonna do our warm up first because I don't want you like like reading the move, reading the workouts. I want you uh, actually doing the workout with me. So, um, all right, all you ghouls and witches. I just came up with that myself. Stand up. Let's get our warm up together. Oh, do you like my snake pants? Yes. <laughs> I didn't even plan that. All right, so stand up, let's do an around the world. Oh man, one of these days I'm gonna buy a wide angle laptop. I don't even make those. Roll out your ankle. Oh, you don't need to have shoes on, I just forgot to take mine off. Roll out your other ankle. You might want a yoga mat though, and you definitely want some stairs. Actually, for the most part, you could do this without stairs, but there's there's two movements that will require stairs. All right, step your feet together. Let's get some knee circles. Warming up the ankles and the knees. Ski your breaths. Inhale. Big hip circles, big hip circles. Lean into the hips, lean into one side, press the hips forward, make some big hip circles and switch directions. It is, today is I think the 22nd, um, and uh, you have nine days until Halloween, so I hope you have your costumes figured out for all that trick-or-treating and partying that you're not going to do because COVID, you know what? A house party where you watch movies on Netflix and eat a bag of candy by yourself really isn't the worst thing in the world. Oh, it's oh, nice. Arm swings. Speaking of arms, I have uh, kind of injured my shoulder. I think I was like setting something in the back seat of my car. And uh, actually, let this be a lesson to you. If you're ever like taking something heavy and you're like wanting to put it in the back seat of your car and you extend and you rotate in this weird way, um, it really puts your shoulder in a bad situation for in terms of injury. So like be smart about the way that you set things in the back seat of a car or pick things up in the back seat of a car because uh, I'm pretty sure that's how I hurt myself. Uh, but I think I'm on the mend. But all that to say, I'm not doing burpees and push-ups today for that reason. And neither are you. All right, a couple little head rolls. Head to the right, to the left. Oh. Have a seat on your mat. Here, now you can get back and see my candle. <laughs> I'm so proud of myself. All right, have a seat on your mat. Let's do some long-legged sit-ups. Touch the ground overhead. Swing the arms, reach for the toes. Let's do five of these. Four, three, two, one. Flip it over into a plank. All right. So let's get a little bit of movement here in this plank. Forward, backward movement with the shoulders over the wrists. And maybe step the feet to the right, to the left, right, left, right, left. Mm -hmm. Just a great way to maintain that core tension and stability while also kind of starting to wake up the feet. All right, step it back to a squat. Get nice and low. Rock back and forth into a squat. So structurally, the way we're going to do this is um, on a running clock, we will um, go ahead and hang out in a squat here. Actually, step it back into a lunge. A little bit easier to keep some movement going. Um, we are going to move through two rounds of a given set of eight movements, each 
movement you will do for 30 seconds with 15 seconds of rest in between them. So think of it like, like a really beefy Tabata style uh, workout, right? Because Tabata is also a two to one work rest, but Tabata, if you remember, is 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest. This is 30 seconds of work, 15 seconds of rest. So a little bit more time to get into the meat and potatoes of the movements. And there's eight movements total. So we're gonna move through them quickly and the movements are all themed. Are you ready for this? I'm ready for it. Okay, um, the movements are on this little piece of paper here. Okay, so we've got candlestick rolls, Spider-Man planks, scary squats. I'll explain what all of these are. Scary squats, bird dogs, zombie walks, corpse sit-ups, and booty burners on the right, and then booty burners on the left. Many of these movements um, you maybe have already done before, but I just renamed them to sound Halloween-y and scary. So um, we'll just go back over what they are uh, so that you recognize them when they come up. <laughs> okay, um, a candlestick roll. I actually don't think you've done this before because this is kind of an aggressive um, uh, gymnastics movement. And actually for that reason, I'm gonna save it to the end to uh, talk about when we're nice and warm. Um, so let's move on to the Spider-Man planks. Okay, so we already did the planks. Um, you can, of course, just hold your plank for 30 seconds. If a Spider-Man plank is not working for you today, or if you want to try doing Spider-Man planks, try to tap your knee to your elbow, knee to elbow, knee to elbow. And you know what? Even if you can't tap your knee to your elbow, even if it just goes toward the elbow, that's not the worst thing in the world, all right? So um, if planks bother your wrists, um, if you own a set of dumbbells, you could like use, use the dumbbells like, like handles on the floor. That's always a great modification for um, if plank hurts your wrists. Or you can do fists if you've got particularly tough fists. You also have the option to lower down onto a forearm, in which case obviously a Spider-Man plank is probably inaccessible for you because your elbows are touching the ground. Okay, I hope you have a pretty good sense of what you will do for Spider-Man planks. Stand up. Now, when I say scary squat, I really mean a double bounce squat. One, two, stand. One, two, stand. Let's do six of these. Two, stand. Five, two, stand. Four, two, stand. Three, two, stand. Two, two, stand. One, two, stand. That's a double, that's a scary squat, okay? Um, do keep your heels on the earth. Do keep your, do step your feet wide enough so that you can keep your heels on the earth. And if for some reason you have an injury or something that um, inhibits you from being able to drop your hips below the, your, your knees, just go as low as you can. One, two, stand, one, two, stand, all right? So it's not the end of the world if you can't get your hips down below your knees, but of course that is the goal. That is the expected range of motion. Okay, um, after the scary squats, we've got bird dogs. Um, <laughs> I was inspired by hunting season, which is coming up um, next month in some states. Uh, and uh, bird dogs, you start in a tabletop position, opposite arm is leg, set it back down, opposite arm is leg, set it back down. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to do, the, do a couple of these with me. And as you're doing this, Pay special attention to your midline. Watch me for one second. It is really tempting and really easy to just totally relax the midline and turn this into like a sad little hammock shape, all right? If my core is not engaged, then I'm just sacrificing my, um, my neutral spine and I'm not getting any of the benefit of extending my arms and legs. And so the idea here is that you wanna be active in the belly, active in the low back, all right? And so you're extending from the midline, keeping that relationship between your hips and your shoulders stable and not wiggly the whole time. Bird dogs, right, left, right, left. Zombie walks, stand up. So zombie walks, you will, um, you can do these in place or you can, if you like are outside or if you have some space at your house or something like that and you wanna walk around, that's sometimes a little bit more fun. A zombie walks, walk looks like this. And you know, it's actually a little bit easier if you go across the body. So you'll notice that, what am I doing? I'm, I'm, tapping my, I'm tapping my hand 
to opposite foot. I've got my foot flexed in order to present the toe to the hand. I'm not doing a big swing out, right? So as I'm just, I'm just picking my foot up and you can travel forward with the zombie walk like this and this, this. Have fun with it. Right, left, right, left. Okay, so you'll be doing that for 30 seconds also. The next movement is corpse sit-ups. <laughs> okay, so a corpse sit-up. Um, make it as corpsey and scary as you can. I mean, you know, picture picture the corpse in the coffin that goes, Ooh, that's your corpse sit-up. Try to touch your toes, but you can use the arms. Just like, don't use them for momentum, all right? So you're using your arms as weight, but do try to keep these from being like a swinging arm movement. So have it be a little bit more strict than you usually do. Sit up a little slower. Um, sometimes when you slow down a movement that historically you might have a tendency to introduce momentum to, sometimes when you slow it down, you can actually make it more challenging, which is great. We're doing those for 30 seconds. Corpse sit-ups. Oh, and the booty burners. I know you've been curious what that is. Here's a booty burner. So a booty burner is a curtsy lunge plus a leg raise elevated on the step. So I'm going to show you what that is, and then you're going to try it. So I'm facing the step. I'm going to start with my left foot up, and then the curtsy part means that I'm going across the midline, and then I'm stepping up lifting my leg, all right? Tap the knee, step up, lift the leg. Tap the knee, step up, lift the leg. And then after 30 seconds, we'll do a 15 second rest and then we'll go over to the right side. Right foot is on the step, tap the knee, step up, lift the leg. Tap the knee, step up, lift the leg. Now something that I want you to really think about, since I can't watch what you're doing, is a curtsy lunge is, is the really key is the key thing here and that here if I'll show you while I'm square to you a curtsy lunge doesn't just go straight back like so you actually cross the midline all right and then pick the knee up cross the midline and then pick the knee up that's how we really get that activation in the outer hip you obviously don't have to add the step um, you don't have to elevate this on the step you can do it on your mat all right so you're crossing the midline Bringing the knee up, crossing the midline, bringing the knee up, okay? Uh, do try to tap the back knee to the earth, um, but don't bash it against the earth, right? You want to keep your knees healthy because they need to last you your whole life. Okay, those are all the movements that we have together today. Oh, candlestick rolls. I told you I would show you these last. So a candlestick roll looks like this, and then I want you to give it a try. You're going to get some momentum. And then you're gonna stand all the way up, and then you sit down, roll back, stand all the way up. Okay, so candlestick rolls come to us from the world of gymnastics, and um, they require a fair amount of flexibility in the ankles and the hips, as well as, um, I don't know, just some control in the core as you direct your momentum forward and then upward. So maybe give that a try. And it's not the worst thing in the world if you have to encourage yourself up with one hand, all right? So if you're pressing yourself off the ground with one hand, that's totally fine. Maybe, maybe you try to alternate your hands so you um, don't establish a dominant movement pattern, you know? Um, candlestick rolls. They're kind of also called back burp. Well, back burpees are a little different. Um, the, one of the tricks with candlestick rolls, I'll say this, is that um, you'll notice that on the backswing, I'm getting a lot of my body weight up onto my shoulders, all right? And so I'm lifting my hips off my shoulders. And then when I create that reverse momentum, I'm creating even more of that kinetic energy to sweep me forward and up onto my feet. Um, it's very satisfying when you figure it out. And so. Um, Maybe try doing a few of those candlestick rolls today during our workout. Okay, um, so now that you know the movements, uh, they are still there on the, um, on the notebook, and we will go through all of these movements, there's eight of them in total, two times, all right? So like I said, Tabata style, not Tabata style, sorry, 
it's work rest, 30 seconds of movement, 15 seconds of rest, 30 seconds of movement, 15 seconds of rest. We move all the way through the list, hitting each of them one time, and then we go right back to the top. We're not gonna take a long rest in between the two sets. We're just gonna get right into it from the second set of booty burners, 15 seconds of rest, right into the 30 seconds of candlestick rolls. Okay, so it's gonna go pretty quickly. I don't actually know. I think it's gonna be like eight minutes or less. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm just gonna start a timer on my clock because that's easier to keep track of. And maybe you can start a timer on your clock too. Yeehaw. Are you ready? Starts with candlestick rolls. I hope you can read this. Um, if you can't read it on the screen, if for some reason it's like really low resolution, I will still call these out. So it starts with candlestick rolls, and then in during every rest, I will call out what the upcoming movement is. All right, you ready for this? Candlestick rolls, 30 seconds, starting in five, four, three, two, one, go! 30 seconds of movement. That doesn't last very long, so give it everything you've got. Figure out these candlestick rolls, stand all the way up, and then get back into it. Already 15 seconds through. Four, three, two, one, rest for 15 seconds. Okay, 15 seconds of rest, and then we will do Spider-Man planks. 15 seconds to rest, and then Spider-Man planks. Five seconds. Three, two, one, Spider-Man planks for 30 seconds. Or hold plank, either Spider-Man or hold plank. Keep it up for 30 seconds. Four, three, two, one. Rest for 15 seconds. Okay, so take a little breather, shake out the wrist. Next, we've got the scary squats, also known as double bounce squats. Starting in five, four, three, two, one. Go, 30 seconds of work. Hit that double bounce, hit the bottom of the squat, and then hit it again. Three, two, one, rest for 15 seconds. Rest for 15 seconds. Next up is a bird dogs, bird dogs, starting in five. Remember, right and left, left and right. Two, one, go. Maintain that tension from the midline. Thirty seconds of movement. Two, one, rest. All right, so after bird dogs, we've got zombie walks. Zombie walks in eight seconds. Remember, that's the one where you kick your foot up and tap your hand. Two, one, 30 seconds of zombie walks. I'm going for a walk. Ten seconds. Two, one, rest. Fifteen seconds of rest, and then we move to the corpse sit up. Sitting up like a corpse, right out of that coffin. <laughs> Five seconds. Two, one, go. Or 
we're not using momentum so much as we are using the core tension of our bellies. Five seconds. Two, one, rest. Okay, so 15 seconds and then we do booty burners. These are moving fast. Moving quickly through these. Booty burners, I'm gonna start on my left, with my left foot planted. Two, one, go. We're just focusing on one side for these 30 seconds, and then we move to the other leg. So leave everything right here. Three, two, one, pause for 15 seconds and then you switch to the other side. So I started with my right foot up, next is my left. In five, four, three, two, one, right here. Five, four, three, two, one. Rest for 15 seconds. Okay, we're right back up at the top with those candlestick rolls. Second time through. By the way, this whole workout's gonna take 12 minutes. Three, two, one. Here we go. Ten seconds. Three, two, one. Fifteen seconds of rest. Next is Spider Man planks. Spider Man planks. Right here. Two, one. Spider Man planks right here. Need elbow. Need elbow. Keep it up. Active through the core. Five, four, three, two, one. 15 seconds of rest. Whew. The nice thing about only two rounds is that every time you do a movement, it's the last time you have to do that movement. No more. Scary squats. Ooh. Three, two, one, double bounce at the bottom. Halfway there. Five, four, three, two, one, rest, 15 seconds of rest, and next we have bird dogs. Bird dogs, right, left, right, left, crossing the midline, active through the core. Oh, man. Go, opposite arm is leg. Pick it up, set it down. Pick it up, set it down, active through the core, maintain that tension in the low belly like if someone were to come around and tickle you you'd be just fine two one time 15 seconds um zombie walks zombie walks 
three, two, one, go. Ten seconds. Three, two, one. Rest. Next is the corpse sit up. Fifteen seconds of rest, and then thirty seconds in your corpse sit ups. <sighs> Couple deep breaths. Three, two, one. Ten seconds left in the corpse sit-ups. Three, two, one. Fifteen seconds of rest. All right, we transition into the booty burners on one side, booty burners on the other side, and then that's it. Starting in five seconds. Go! Right across the midline in that curtsy lunge. Three, two, one, rest and rotate. Switch it to the other side. This is the last little bit of movement right here. Five seconds. You're doing great. Go! Five seconds, keep it up. Two, one, time. Oh, very nice. Okay, so all together, that whole workout took six minutes per round, so that wound up being 12 minutes total. Not too shabby, not too shabby. I hope that was fun for you and spooky. Um, I am sure that I will be back next week with even more Halloween themed movements. And so I'm so excited to see you there. Bye.